Hey, welcome back to the channel. So there's a ton of content on the internet, on YouTube, on Google, around getting clients. But there isn't much around how to pick the right clients, which I think is a thousand times more important than just getting clients. Now, as a beginner, and I struggled with this as well, it's tempting to just take any client that comes your way. Anyone who is willing to pay you money is someone that you'd be willing to take as a client. But here's the thing, if you pick the wrong client, someone that you can't help, then you're not gonna be able to get them a good result. They're gonna be upset. They'll probably give you a bad review and no one's happy there. So we wanna be able to pick the right clients that you can actually get results for. So it helps me to think of myself as an investor. And an investor picks and chooses the companies that they want to invest in and put their time, money, and energy into. So if I'm an investor, I don't wanna just pick any company to just throw my money at and put all my time and energy into. That's more like gambling. What I wanna do is pick the right companies who have the right criteria. That's gonna give both of us the best chance at success because as an investor, you only get paid when the companies you invest in do well. And that's what I think about when I'm going out and finding clients. Now, when you pick the right clients, you're able to get them a good result, which turns into a raving review or a case study. And then from there, it's a lot easier to get more clients and higher paying clients who are paying you more for your fees. Now, since all the work that I do is around email marketing and copywriting, that's what this video is gonna be about is the criteria that I look for for getting email marketing and copywriting clients. But you can apply these three criteria to basically any service. It doesn't have to be email marketing or copywriting. So with that said, let's dive into these three criteria on how to pick good clients right now. Number one, and most important, they need to already be making money. So they must have a proven product or service that's already selling and is already making money. And this is the number one mistake I see that newbies make and it's because of confidence. They think, oh, well, I'm just a new copywriter. I'm a new email marketer, so I don't have any right to be working with established companies. So I'm gonna go after these brand new companies who are just starting out, who have not made any money, and I'm gonna work with them. Now, this is the worst thing that you can do because if you work with a company or individual who's not making any money or who hasn't made sales yet, and you wanna help them make their first sales and get off the ground, that's very tough to do. And if they do give you money for your services, a lot of time they won't be able to afford you, but if they do give you money, that's gonna be their last dollar and they're gonna be hitting you up at all hours of the day, expecting you to do miracles for them. So you don't wanna take on broke clients. You wanna work with companies and clients who are already making money. I look for companies doing at least seven figures a year or more because I know those are the people who are already making money and I'm gonna help them make more of that. Now, a good way to think about this is imagine you're trying to move a boulder. Is it easier to move a boulder that's just sitting in place, a giant boulder that's just sitting on the ground, you have to push it and get it moving, or one that's already moving and already rolling, and all you gotta do is give it another push to get it rolling faster. I'm, I'm pretty sure you know what's easier there. So we wanna go and push boulders that are already moving, and in this case, businesses who are already making money. Those are the people that you wanna go out and help and work with as clients. The second criteria I look for in a good client is they must be in a well-defined niche or industry. So they must be in a niche that I can easily point to and find tons of other companies in. So examples of this are SaaS companies, software companies, fitness brands and influencers, marketing agencies, e-commerce stores, info product sellers. These are niches where I can look at the company and say, that's, that's a SaaS company, that's a software company, that's an e-commerce store, that's a guy selling info products, and I can find thousands of other companies that are doing the same thing. Now, a mistake that I see a lot of beginners make is they try to go for these untapped niches that no one's ever heard of before because they're afraid of competition. But competition is a good thing. It means there's money in the niche, there's money in the industry, and we can go in and we can make some money. So we wanna work with niches that are already defined and are already making money, not these untapped niches that no one's ever heard of and is not proven yet. We want a niche with enough clients to work with and with companies who are able to pay us for our services. So think of it like going fishing. We don't wanna take a boat out to a random body of water and just hope that we're gonna cast out our, our fishing poles and, and catch some fish. We wanna go to the areas that we know have fish so we can just cast out our bait and easily catch some fish, right? That's what we're doing. We're going after well-defined niches is we're going to areas that we know there's already fish and all we gotta do is cast out our pole, cast out our bait, and we're gonna catch some of those fish. So make sure that you're picking a niche or an industry that is already well-defined and proven to be making money. Now the third criteria is they must have the assets that allow us to be successful at our job and at our service. Now, since we're talking email and that's the service that I offer, there's a couple things that I look for. Number one, they have to have an email list. I'm not gonna work with a company who has no email list. Otherwise, 
what's the point of writing emails if they don't have a list or people to write the emails to? The second asset that I look for is some kind of sales tracker, right? Is the platform that they're using able to track sales or do they have some kind of separate platform that can track the sales from email? If they don't have that, I'm not gonna know if my emails are working and I can't gauge the performance. So I wanna make sure that they have those two things, an email list and a way to track the sales coming from email. So for you, it's as easy as figuring out what assets do you need to be successful at your job and using that as a filtering device when you go out and find clients. If I go out and reach out to a prospect and they don't have an email list and they don't have a sales tracker, I'm not gonna work with them because they don't have the assets for me to be successful at the service that I'm doing for them. Now think of it like baking a pie and you're the chef, you're the person baking the pie. You want the potential client to have brought all the ingredients for you to bake the pie so you don't have to go to the supermarket and buy all the individual ingredients yourself. You want the ingredients to be there so that you just put it together and you go out and you bake the pie. So just figure out what ingredients do you need to bake the pie and that's what you're gonna use as your criteria when you're picking clients. Those are the assets that you need. So if you follow these three criteria, you're gonna be able to go out and find clients that you can actually get results for that turn into case studies and help you get more and higher paying clients. Now, remember, they must already be making money, they need to be in a well-defined niche or industry, and they must have the assets that you need to be successful at your service or at your job. So those are the three criteria in making sure that you're picking the right clients to work with. If you enjoyed this and got value out of it, make sure you give it a like and subscribe if you're not already. And if you're interested in both learning how to write emails and getting the right clients to write emails for, go to emailrainmaker.com. That's gonna take you directly to my free Facebook group where you can join and learn all about that. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.